I'm Chad Grigsby and you're watching The Tour Life. Here we go, 2021 season's underway. We leave Minnesota, it's freezing cold. Uh, we have to head down to the plant. We have to go to the Vexus plant, which is pretty cool. Been down there a couple times, but never been down there to pick my boat up or to do a complete plant tour. And luckily, Keith Daffron was nice enough to take us through. I know we've done this on a, a show last year where we kind of went through the power pole, but this is a really cool trip where we actually get to see how it's made, all the guys that make it, and, and and why they're doing what they're doing, stuff like that. So it's a real behind the scenes, uh, detailed video of what they do and why they do it. And it's done better than any other boat company. It's it's super cool, you guys will like that. So, all right, we made it. All the way from Minnesota down to the Vexus plant. Here we are. It's quite a little drive, but we made it. We're gonna do a little uh, meet and greet here. Hopefully show you guys the, what the plant looks like. So we're gonna go inside and see Keith at his office. I think he's behind the desk, but. Oh, no, there he is right there. What's up? How's that? See, he doesn't just work behind a desk. Look, he's driving a tractor uh, around. You can't build boats behind a desk. Yeah. <laughs> How's Grigsby? Good, how are you? I'm good. Oh. Well, you got part of a boat. Yeah, we got the good part. Yeah, you're gonna need it. It's an yeah. important yeah. ingredient. Without that, it doesn't go very fast. Uh, uh, no, you're, you'd be very bad with oars. Yeah, yeah. Just got here down to flipping. Uh, glad to be here. Keep the app on here with Vexus. We're gonna do a little plant tour. All the cool stuff that they're doing. Great new technology, new everything with the bass boat industry, and he's the man behind it. Well, I, this is the team behind it. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. And Chad, it's good to have you here. I often say that you guys bring the cold fronts with you, and <laughs> that happened in this case. Yep, so I we sure appreciate did. the cool morning we've got. But. But it is good to have you here. There, there's a lot happening in our little town of Flippin, Arkansas, and most of it's at this facility. Yep. And uh, and so I want to take just a few minutes, if I could, this morning, show you some of what we've done, how we started, and then kind of fast forward to where we are today because there is a lot happening. We've got multiple fiberglass, uh, both bass and deep V yep. multi-species boats. Of course, our lineup of AVX aluminum, even our new ADX deep V aluminum yep. is starting to come down the line. You'll see a production boat in play here at the end of the line. So if you would, let's just walk yeah. and talk. That's right. okay with you. One thing that's important is that we built this facility with, from a blank sheet of paper. I don't believe that's ever been done with a new startup in a boat manufacturer. It always started in some empty building sure. and then graduated yeah. maybe to one that you produced to be all your own. We did this from the beginning. Every square foot of concrete, every overhead track, the air conditioner units, all that was, was right. pre-thought out. A lot of times they'll just say, oh, there's an old building over there, let's make it a And it's hard to do. It's yeah. hard to do and build the kind of product that we want consumers to appreciate. Yep. And these paint booths are a big part of that because so much, whether it be our fiberglass boats and certainly our AVX aluminum, find their way through these paint booths are state of the art, their, their ovens, it's all a design uh, of a manufacturing facility to give a product that customers aren't used to experiencing. Sure, yep, okay. Hey, how you been? Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Yeah, good. Hey, how are you? I'm good. That's Eric. Hey, good to see you. Chad's here shooting some YouTube videos, getting ready for his announcement that he's going to unveil when he goes to Florida this this winter and takes his new Vexus along with him. That's great. Yeah. We're sure happy to have you on board. I'm glad to be here. That's awesome. Yeah. Glad to be back with the family. That's it. That's right. Good. Did I see y'all pull in the black pickup this morning? Okay. I wonder. I wonder who that was. 
Out of state tags. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna do a quick walk through and just you know showcase okay. some of these things. Good deal. Yeah, good yep. deal. Yep. We got a lot of stuff going on. So I, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, great to have you. Good yep. to see you. Thank see you. Guys. So yeah, great illustration right there walks the CEO of our company. Yeah. And so I think if, if you don't see anything else out of this tour, know that we're fishermen and we're boat builders. That, and I think that's very important that we're, we're on the floor, we're, we're out in the product. And I think that that's important from an innovation perspective. Oh, yeah. And you see that. So in this area here is where all of our fiberglass lamination is done for the boats themselves. And what's unique about it is the work environment is improved so drastically. It's climate controlled. There's not wet and sticky all over the floor. You don't see very minimal need for, uh, for protective suits or respirators, things of that sort. It's all because of the infusing, vacuum infusion technology that we're using. A lot more which, green. As an angler, you're going to appreciate too. So, yeah. so one, it's a side benefit that we're improving the work environment and the environment in general. Sure. What, what it means to you is we build a boat that's lighter, faster, and stronger than what you're used to experiencing. And, and that's very important. So it's, it's bringing you know, new technology, aerospace technology, into the world of tournament bass fishing. And that's something we're particularly proud of and again was designed this way from inception. Yeah. Yeah, very important. Another thing that's unique is you see these boats uh, you're, you're used to seeing the traditional poly plate gel coat like you see on these couple of boats here. But here is an instance of a boat that will get our hard case paint. So it was gel coated while it was in the mold. We had to do that to protect the finish and to provide an interior color. Sure. But now this boat will make its way onto the rack, into the paint booth, where we will apply a hard case paint, automotive style yep. if you would, that is to match whatever your preference might be. I like to say if you want us to match your wife's nail polish, bring us her <laughs> nail polish because we're capable of that. And, and, and customers really appreciate that customization sure. that we offer, but, we, but you can get it both ways. Yeah. That's another thing, we're a very flexible company from that perspective. So we're building a lineup of certainly tournament bass boats like yep. you're going to be running and then the Deep B series, the 19, 20, and 22, uh, all of which are uh, demand is fabulous for yeah. them at the current yep. time. Yep. That's good. I don't know if I have any fingernail polish that I want to <laughs> use my color, but we'll... Uh, but it happens. You know, we, we uh, it seems like weekly we come through a special color. It might be to match. Oftentimes it's pickup automotive yeah. matching yeah. but it, it yeah. could be some other flavor yep. that in fact i built one for our japanese distributor that was half one color and half another you know so it was blue on one side <laughs> and black on the other and those are flexibility uh, features that we have that others yeah. don't yeah that's almost impossible to do in the boating industry that's right yeah now let me just walk you quickly back to our small parts area what's the step here we're out of room already all right <laughs> So I think oftentimes when you think of a boat manufacturer, you think more assembly. You think that we assemble them into a boat. That's not true here at Vexus. All of these fiberglass components, these are small, small parts that make up your boat. Yep. It could be the lids that that you're standing on, it could be the compartment boxes underneath the lids. In this case, these are the fenders for your trailer. Here's a console. All of that is built alongside the, what we call the deck and the hull assembly, and then marry up together as the boat goes through production. And again, all of these are built under closed cavity bag molding technology. So as Ralph has loaded these fenders, there'll be a bag that stretches over this, and we pull a vacuum, and you'll watch that resin like right suck here. into that. Yeah, it'll be a silicone bag. Like you see here, it's working on. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's achieving proper vacuum, and at that point, the resin gets injected and flows through the part. So you, you've not had a human that had to extract air right. from those parts yep. by, by doing it by that. hand, that's yeah. right. And the consistency is downright scary yeah. as a result of it. Yeah. A very knowledgeable team that knows this. That, uh, Jimmy here will know exactly how much volume to put a resin into these fenders. So you've got very consistent parts. And that's happening all the way through this entire uh, area that you see. That's cool, man. 
It's cool stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm the old way. Yeah. And so even these things, like this happens to be a, a VX console, like you'll be running, because of its underturn here, we have to build the, the, the mold itself as two pieces. Yep. So here's the seam where we took the mold apart away from the part, and we'll actually sand this down, and this will be your accent color underneath oh, that okay. area yep. to match whatever accents on the remaining areas of the boat that you yep. chose. Yep. So. All of it's made in house. All of it's in house, yeah. Right. A couple of other things to kind of get down in the weeds just a little bit as it relates to the boat. Are you going to run a 20 or a 21? 20. A 20. So yeah. we're standing next to a 20. It's important to know these boats were 100% designed digitally. Now you're able to mock up certain parts yeah. uh, manually, yeah. but, but it was all done in a digital file and cut digitally. And what that means to you as a guy that, that this is your office is you know that that both hulls, both sides are a mirror image of each other. Yeah. You know that the fit of these uh, of these two parts as they come together is as accurate as ever been in the in the fiberglass boat building arena and you'll take you know many of our team have done this chad longer than i've been around you know this isn't their first day at work right, right. and it's fun to watch them attest to what technology is doing for us because the guys that maybe put this rub rail on and have done so for decades can come to you and say, we've never had boats that fit this consistently. And when you're up in those treacherous conditions in the Great Lakes and in other areas, you're gonna appreciate that this boat was made to be put together and to stay together right. forevermore. Yeah. And another thing that's illustrated here is the depth of the boat. So one thing you're gonna really experience as you spend time in the boat is how much the, the ride is improved. Some of that is our airway pedestal yep. technology, but I, I, I entrust you that it's not all of it. A, a good bit, and I venture to say over half of it, is the design of the hull itself. So your fuel tank will sit longitudinally down in between these stringers. So if you think about 50 gallon of fuel weighing approximately seven pounds to the gallon, I put that 350 pounds down in the keel, like it, think of a ship that travels the ocean and the ballast that's important to keep that center of gravity down. Yeah. That's what we've done for you here. So Instead you, of sitting on it like we normally would That's right, on, and, and sloshing back, side to side. Yeah, back yeah that's, and forth. so, uh, you know, when your boat 100 at takeoff, that washing machine water that yeah. you're used to running in, yeah. you're going to have a completely different experience it's as a result of this middle. very thing. Yeah, yeah you're going to say, wow, this is just something else. Yeah. Because you're just flying past other people that are fighting that wave action that yep. you're not. That was all your ideas too, right? Well, it's our ideas. You don't know, it wasn't mine. I, you know, here's the fun part is that if you'll just listen, the, the good ideas will come to you. It's yeah. all about executing yeah. them. Yeah. For example, on the transom here, these shallow water anchors that are so popular yeah. now, uh, they were a, they were an afterthought to bass boats. Mm -hmm. If you'll trace back, they were really designed for a flat skiff to be That's bolted right. directly yep. to the boat. Salt water. So we started attaching them with these with these funky looking brackets to the setback plate, yep. and as a result, they shake and vibrate. Yep. Whether it's in the water or running down the interstate, you travel thousands of miles, and that harmonic shake does damage to the shallow water sure. anchor. Yep. So what we did when we designed this VX series is we widened this transom. And, and, and we've got them made, and yours will mount, right here directly yep. to the boat. And, and all of our testing tells us that the longevity of these shallow water anchors is magnified exponentially just because less of this one simple thing. Yeah. yeah, one simple thing. Not to mention it looks better and your hoses are hidden yep. and they're not sticking out to catch on buck brush and other things when you're back in the areas that you're going to need a shallow well, water anchor. even back in Minnesota, you have to go, you, they have an inspector that looks for grass and weeds and everything. Well, guess what? It always gets hung on that. That's right. On that big bracket. On them brackets. Yep. yep. And so another thing you'll too. see on the finished product, we supply a Torx 20 wrench for every fastener to open any of these areas from a serviceability perspective. Yes. So you're out on the water, oftentimes yeah. you're doing your own maintenance. You can carry a Torx 20, you can remove the splash wheel cover, you can remove the uh, switch assembly yeah. at the console, the bow panel, any of that can be taken out and, and do any service or any troubleshooting that might need to be done on the fly. And nice. so again, that's just kind of thinking through a, a heavy user that's spending a lot of time on the water or needing to add a, a new a depth finder feature yeah. that just got announced and they drop ship to you at the tournament. Easy to get to. That's right. Mm -hmm. just, yep. Yeah. You can take a different approach and make it harder to do and cheaper for us, but that's just not who we are here in Texas. Right. We just don't believe in that. We subscribe to a theory that we've built this to last forever. Yep. You know, we really have. So 
yeah, this is important to show. So we've designed these these boat turner rack assemblies to to do a couple different things to paint with, uh, so you can you articulate the boat to any particular angle to sure. apply the paint. Yep. But it also serves as a purpose for us to apply the keel protector. Yep. You're seeing that being applied with a vacuum as well. So we're sucking a vacuum after the adhesive was applied to the protector. Now it's sucked down and just so that's never going to peel off. Uh -uh, no, you take a chisel. Right. Yeah, and as You've seen this done before with a multitude of ratchet straps. Yep. What you've got is pressure that's inconsistent. Right. It's where the strap is and in between you're not getting the, that's the beauty of that. You're getting the whole, everything's even. Yeah, if I, if I remember the math correctly, it's 12 pounds per square inch of pressure. And so it's just enormous how much. And then how long is that? Just sure a few part. hours. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In fact, while we're doing other things, we put this on sure. and we're able to turn the boat back over. We're also able to, to really give the luster and the finish of the boat a final sand buff. Uh, these guys have all been certified. They've got special buffing materials and compounds. And this is one that's been painted, so it's got the uh, tungsten hard case yep. paint on it. And they're putting the finishing touches on it before it rolls into the final assembly yep. area. Just a mirror finish. You know, you got ways yep. of measuring that nowadays. Yep. That's the beauty of yep. it. Another thing that's fun about the hard case paint is the aftermarket serviceability. If, you're, if you were to nick or scratch this yeah. over time, uh, a uh, competent body shop can do that. Yeah. You don't have to take don't it to a specialist that you're glass. used to. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. And there's a good many parts, maybe not uh, marine related, that are fiberglass parts that are post painted. Think of an over the road tractor, uh, trailer assembly, fenders, hoods, yeah. you know, uh, or farm implements are yeah. another example. Those are all fiberglass parts yep. with automotive style finish applied to them. So it's not new technology, it's just new to this section right. of our industry. Yeah. As you might expect, we have separate final assembly lines. Boats get, get, get I, I like to say that a boat becomes your boat right here. You know, from the point it's painted and to the point that we put all of these uh, components, depth yeah. finders, trailer yeah. motors, all of those special, yep. unique items on. And so this is a team of experienced craftsmen. We're using digital technology here. We've got uh, uh, our ERP system is pulling work orders so it knows exactly what ethernet cable your boat needs for the two depth finders. It's not just an assembly line where every boat's the exact same. That's right, and we're not just grabbing on a whim yep. and hoping for the best. It's yep. all pre-thought out. And so as you see a boat start to finish, you're able to see some of those smaller things that are easily overlooked, such as our bow and stern eyes, these, these, these uh, formed pieces that aren't just an off-the-shelf item. And that's particularly important on your bow, where your boat gets a lot of wear against yep. that bow roller from loading and unloading. And you'll notice that you don't have that same wear and tear to your boat over time. We incorporated this boarding ladder into the boat itself. We were talking about things hanging up on grass. Yes. So that's something you're accustomed to is, a, a, oftentimes you see a ladder that looks like it was a hospital bed, yep. you know, that folds down. In our case, ours tucks away out of the way where you want it for uh, until you need it at which point at the click of a button it extends and now because safety is very important to us cold water heavy heavy gear layered up it's not easy even for a fit yeah. person you to be able to, to get in the boat you do so mm -hmm. so that's something we're particularly proud of it's very clean yeah and it's tucked away even to the point that on the on the opposite side of it we put in an exhaust manifold for all of your water. So your bilge pumps and your aerator pump out all extract here. You're used to seeing uh, plastic, plastic yeah. grommets that yeah. are just uh, uh, literally screwed into the deck itself. Yeah. Well, what happens with this plastic material is over time it chalks and it fades and yeah. it cracks from, from UV yep. exposure. So I, I, I challenge you to look upon our boat, even the smallest things such as this carpet trim, that's aluminum carpet trim. Yeah. You know, make plastic. Yeah, or rubber. Yeah. Even worse, yeah. that's just going to fade and crack over time. So we go so far as to trim the carpet with a piece of aluminum so you don't have that wear and tear over time. Well, it's just the small little details that most people overlook. That, and it's important for us to point out. Right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because in the long run, if you're going to spend this much money on a boat, you don't, you don't want it to look bad in three, four years. You exactly. want it to look good in 10 years. Right? That's Just right. like you bought it. Especially so. through the accelerated use you give it. Right. And so what Mike's putting on now are these uh, uh, plastic or Lexan uh, see-through 
lids for your intensive care light bulb yep. system. Yep. A guy like you is going to love this. Yep. From a culling perspective, you're able to open the carpeted lid, and now you can see your catch at any point in time. You can remember that the white buoy is my, my little fish. Sure. You're able to check their condition at any point. Yep. I'm even, uh, I even find myself checking their condition while running. You know, where before you had yeah, to come off plane, and, and you were worried. Worried about Yeah, now out. you can just crack the lid, look, and yeah. just keep trucking. Yep. yep. Cool. All very important things to, you know, because that makes you money. Yeah. All your money's made right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're particularly proud of our live well system in general, the yeah. intensive care setup and yep. all the tests that we've done to, to really prove how valuable it is to, to protect your catch, not just for the weigh in, but long after that oh, as sure. well. We want to make sure they stay alive. That's right. And here in the transom area, you've got your uh, your a charger for your yep. uh, charger plug. You've got your remote drain plug, so no longer do you have to kneel down. All those things are incorporated here at the back for a good reason. You can do any of this with the cover on the boat. Nice. As, it, as these guys are installing certain components, it just makes it easy to point out that what Danny's doing is installing this rubber trim that provides the gasket seal for the lids. But pay attention to the height of this lid. So again, going back to the digital world we were in, you're able to put this boat in any conceivable angle that it could possibly be in while either on the water or at a VRBO during a torrential rainstorm. Yeah. And what that told us is the best way to, to, to make a box or a building dry is to, get, to evacuate the water. That's why you put pitch on a roof. So that's what we've done here. We've increased the height of this and then we've put drains on the insides. So if this boat were to be sitting nose down, let's yeah, say I've on had your it a trailer. Lot, a lot of time. Yeah. You, you, you may back in somewhere and you're sitting That's like right. This. And it's going to pull. Where's it? The water doesn't go where it's supposed to all It's going to pull up and pour into this that's box right. is what it's going to do. Unless Hence the have, drain. Unless you yeah. have a drain. Mm -hmm. And then if it's going the way that it's supposed to be, it can just exit out right here. That's right. right. And then we've lined all these boxes. They're all gel coated boxes lined with this EVA rubber. So you don't have to worry about scuffing those boxes over time. And then on this port or your side. Equipment. Or your, your equipment, reels. your reels, yeah. that's right. Banging and, against that. Yeah. And we wanted a boot in this one because this is your heavy box. This is the box you're going to put 30, 40, maybe even up to 50 rods yeah. in. And we, we designed it where you could do that. And then you have tubes in the center box to allow you to put the four you're going to pull out first. Yep. Or those important ones that you want to keep separate and still have room for your tackle underneath that's that. That's kind of the last place water goes. This is the first place water goes in our boat. And that's that's by design, again, for it to pour down into the sump of the boat and have the water in the keel where it acts as ballast as opposed to up here where the center of gravity is much higher. Yep. yep. You're also able to see the landing area for your net. So that net is an ambidextrous net storage. So the hoop can be on this side or on this other side. And then you see this EVA flooring that's been laid down prior to the cooler and the seats going in. Uh, high wear areas, quick dry, uh, very user friendly, easy to replace should you damage it in some sure. fashion. I, I think it's over time proving to be a better application than the traditional oh, carpet. Sure. Yeah. So. That's where you're at all the time, up and down, up and down. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you're netting fish or you're laying sli yeah. you're slimy. Yeah. Just, you can just hose this off and it'll look just like it yep. was when it was brand yep. new. So here you see one that's that's awaiting final ship out. We've got the uh, the seats installed on the airway pedestals. This uh, integrated cooler in the center box yeah. is something you'll appreciate that's quickly. Great. 35 quart made to last yeah. and, and provides a great step platform. You can walk deck to deck without ever coming down into the floor of the boat. I don't know how many times I've asked my my marshal or whatever to hand me hand me a drink out of there because I can't. You know, I'm, we hear that I, a I'm lot. Idling, then, yeah, it's like, you know. where do, when do you get something to drink? Yeah, when you're moving. When you're, yeah, yeah, when you're moving. So why not put it where you can exactly. access it when you're yeah. moving? Yeah. And as a result of that, we put this slide drawer underneath the step, yeah. which quickly becomes the gathering spot for the soft plastics you're using that day, for the beanie you just took off, for your glasses that you it's pull the day out. Box. It's a it's a true day box. And then we also put some tool holders in, so you can put your you know your needle nose or your hook file. Any of that yeah. can be easy to grab without yep. having to open a drawer. Yep. The raised front deck was something that's important to us. What that does is it serves two purposes, gives us more room underneath mm -hmm. for storage. And now you can stand here at the lip or the gunnel of the boat and you can pitch and flip all day long yep. without worry of intruding yeah, upon that, that gunnel. Yeah. Yep. 
this fort design is a big part of that as well, Chad, because you'll see that now you've got, uh, like I team fish a lot, I use this analogy that if I'm fishing docks at Lake of the Ozarks, which is about your only yeah, option, okay, yeah. you nose in and in a team tournament, my partner can hit one, the front of one dock and I can hit the yep. other. And it, what that does, it may not sound that meaningful until you do the math and you realize, wait a minute, as a result of this, we flipped 20% more docks over the course of a tournament day and then we've done it more efficiently yeah. than our competitor did because otherwise the other guys back there in no man's land right. where his angles are all wrong. Yep. And and so that it also gives you more raw, you know, more room for rods on the deck for placement. We've even angled this rod, uh, these rod boxes. So when you do extend this and you want to put that hoodie up, you're not intruding upon that reel. It's as simple as a cab tractor that yep. you open and, yeah. it, and, the, and the door's not in your way as a result of it. Nothing got by you guys, did it? Well, you know, there's always room for improvement and that's what we pride ourselves on. They're better today than they were yeah. yesterday. That's yeah. the whole mindset. But it, it is a product of being able to stop, stop for a minute and reflect and say, wait a minute, what? how, what, could it be how do we revolutionize yeah. it? Because evolution's kind of inherent in our DNA. That's yeah. what we do here. But to be able to revolutionize it, that's the fun part. And, and you'll, you'll experience that every day yeah. that you're out there. Yeah. I think it's great. Everything. Just like the little things that most people don't. Yeah, I just say it like so often. This, just it, like this right. Yeah. It, 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 you do it enough so little things, <laughs> yeah. they add up to a big thing. Yeah. And, and I think is that's our human nature is to overlook them until you're using them. Yeah. And then once you use them, like I use this analogy a lot that I don't remember every saying, I wish Chevrolet or Ford would put a thermometer in my truck so I'd know what the outside temperature is. I didn't have that you know idea right but once they've done that you wouldn't dream of having one without right. it right or yeah. air conditioned and heated yeah. seats yeah. all those innovations are the responsibility of the manufacturer yeah now somewhere along the way some guy said wouldn't it be nice if we would angle this rod tip or this rod box so we wouldn't intrude upon our reels yeah. it's the execution of that that i think yeah. we're the where you really butter your bread right so th that's a quick run through on the fiberglass side, but I'll tell you our AVX lineup of aluminum uh, fiberglass infused hybrids, they're tournament worthy as well. Yeah. So can yeah. I take you back yeah, and just kind of give you a quick run through sure. over that as well? Yeah. All right, let's go. So Chad in here is something very unique. As far as I know, we're the only boat manufacturer producing aluminum and fiberglass boats under these same roof. And that was by design as well, yeah. because we felt like there was, and, and time has proven that there really is a market for a tournament grade aluminum fishing oh, boat, but it has all of our DNA in it as well. And so that's what you see happening in here, in addition to us building the trailers for all of the boats. So I'm gonna show you just the high point okay. of all of that. So what's happening here is this is the very beginning of an aluminum boat and all begins with raw aluminum. It could come in a coil or it could come in a sheet, yep. but it gets cut digitally on this Esau plasma cutter, which is running almost around the clock in order to provide all the components for the boats that we're building. From that point, let's just use hulls as an example, which you see bent, those are starboard hulls. Yep. They went into this huge press break, Chad, and what, what happens is that press break through a series of dies takes it from a flat sheet of aluminum to the running strake, yep. the outside hull is bent to the side, and then we nest them to put together here on this first jig. So that's what Colby and the team are doing, is laying a piece of fuel extrusion down to marry up two halves, two hulls and sides together. Once they do that, they'll stitch weld the interior, and they, this is an ambidextrous jig, they'll erect some components and it'll turn over on a hoist and be upside down where we can weld the exterior. From there, then it starts to go down the line. And one thing you'll see is that regardless of the boat, we build a pad hull. So most others are a semi-V, meaning that they come to a V at the keel, which, uh, which prevents them from having the lift and the performance that we're used to having in a pad, pad bass boat. So as these boats get prepped for paint, you come into the paint area and it, and, and it starts to become evident that our mindsets change. We went from a fab shop 
to an, a high-end body shop. Yeah. Just you look at it, it's like a high-end body shop. Yeah. And so this boat has been taped off. All of the exposed areas have been protected, and it will be run into this booth where we apply the primer and the bottom color to it. It'll come back out, bridge crane over to the second booth, and all. It's all by design. It's been allowed to cure during that. And we'll bring it back in and paint the secondary color to it. And that's happening in the second booth. All the while, we're building and painting all of the components. It could be the consoles. It could be the bow panel that goes in the aluminum yeah. boat. Same old screw for your cooler. So here's the cooler that's ready to be painted to go with a boat that's ready to be painted. We've had to tape it off and it's sanded and ready and it will apply the hard case paint to it. Yep. Yeah, there's a guy in there painting. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you two, I don't yeah. know if it's computer. No, yeah. no, it's not. No, our robot is named Kevin. And okay, hey, Kevin. Yep. <laughs> and, and so he's applying the top finish to it along with the clear coat protectant that goes over it. So once Kevin finishes, this is controlled obviously at 70 degrees, and once he walks out, he'll hit the cure cycle. The doors have to be closed. The, the system knows if I open the door, it would turn his air off for his gun. You, you can't paint, you know, yeah. there's all those protective features in, and it'll double the temperature of this of this room in the booth to bake that paint and to flash it quickly on, on the boat. With every boat, we paint a send-off that we're able to send to our independent lab to check for mill thickness, to check for adhesion, scratch resistance, all related back digitally to the respective boat and batch of paint that it was painted with. Others may go this step, but I'll be very surprised yeah. if they do. Yeah. But this has already been baked in there. Yeah, it's right? dry to the touch, but yeah. you wouldn't want to just lay hoses and other things right. on it quickly. You, there's, a, there's a gas that has to escape that sure. paint over a 24-hour period. Final fin finish, we put rub rails on. You see these fiberglass boxes, remember we foam filled yep. them? And so we'll be able to put our trim on, mount the lids that go over them. All of those things begin to happen here at the final assembly area. And these boats get many of the same components yours is gonna have. That, this is a remote drain plug, yep. which is part of the Victor package on these boats. And something many people choose and would like to have. We've got tool holders incorporated here at the front step. It's got a built-in fiberglass cooler. What you see Hank doing here is something that we're particularly proud of is, again, back to innovation. These boats, when we first started, were all carpeted. Well, here you see the sea deck material, and this customer's chosen just to put it in the cockpit floor. Yeah. Now, you can do the entire boat that way yep. if you choose to do so, but this is a very common option that gives you this high wear area with an EVA-style rubber, even to the point that where the footrests go, we'll have that same EVA attached to it. Yeah. We like to say that when we finish here at Vexus, all you really like is fuel. And, and that's true, whether it's rigging the outboard, mounting the propeller, the batteries, all of this, you see this boat going through the final cleanup before it gets inspected, but it really is ready for the water. It yeah. just needs fuel and a quick pre-delivery inspection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>